Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. ready. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys, so don't forget for all your tea sipping needs, make sure you go on to lovelytea.net or amazon.com forward slash shops forward slash lovely tea. Thank you guys so much for the support and stay tuned for the video. All right, you guys, so I want to come on here and talk about the whole fire festival mess. As you guys all know, I, I did the video about the fire festival. I think it was like a year or two ago. I'm gonna be wanting me to talk about this entire situation. This situation is a hot damn mess. So what basically went down is that for the past few months, um, the fire festival, which was started by Ja Rule, yes, Ja Rule. Who would I be without my baby? That Ja Rule, okay? So basically him and tech entrepreneur Billy McFarlane, who's 25, they decided to organize this event in the Bahamas. And they also used a bunch of Instagram models to promote it like Bella Hadid, Emily Ratajkowski, Kendall Jenner, and many more. It was a lot of high profile influencers who basically, you know, hyped this up. They were paid to hype this up. Um, Little Yachty was supposed to be there. Migos was supposed to be there. Blink 182. It was supposed to be all these headliners. The tickets were going anywhere from 400 to 12 thousand dollars it was supposed to be nothing but luxury right there on the beach a lot of people went the tickets even sold out so that's how many people decide to go onto this you know this whole little fire festival situation right so then what happened is that basically the other night once people got to the fire festival it was nothing that was described to them in the commercials and you know in the previews go ahead and check this out the actual experience exceeds all expectations and is something that's hard to put into words. All these things that may seem big and impossible are not. It gives people that type of energy, that type of power. Here's Fire Festival. Those are your mattresses. Those are your tents. So if you guys do not know, Netflix has released a documentary on it, and so has Hulu. And Ja Rule is definitely in his damn feelings, okay? And so he's on social media tweeting his heart out, trying to defend himself. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys these tweets. I'm not reading none of this bullshit to y'all. Y'all go ahead and check this out, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. All right, so you guys just saw Ja Rule's sad ass tweets trying to distance himself. Like we say in the damn South, a hit dog will holler, okay? If you've done nothing wrong, then there's no need to explain yourself to a bunch of strangers on the internet about fuck shit that don't have nothing to do with you. The fact that he wrote an entire dissertation trying to distance himself makes me give Ja Rule the damn side eye, okay? New fallout from that infamous fire festival. Mm -hmm. Co-founder Ja Rule defending himself on social media and now saying he was also a victim of the scam as dueling documentaries put the failed event back in the spotlight. Eva Pilgrim here with the story. Good morning, Eva. Good morning, George. It was supposed to be the music festival of all festivals. Concert goers paid anywhere from $500 to $12,000 for a luxury experience and got anything but that. No refunds were issued, but some of the men and women employed by the festival lost much more. Now Ja Rule taking to social media defending his role in the whole thing. The actual experience exceeds all expectations. 
fire failed this morning. Musician and Fire Festival co-founder Ja Rule in the hot seat. Twitter users not mincing words. Fraud, liar, manipulator, demanding to know what Ja Rule knew and when, following the release of not one, but two new documentaries on Hulu and Netflix. And me and Billy are gonna change the way people look at a young tech entrepreneur and a hip hop mogul. The dueling docs going behind the scenes of the rapper's much hyped 2017 Music Fire Festival. The event, co founded with entrepreneur Billy McFarland, was originally touted as a luxury weekend in the Bahamas, complete with supermodels, luxury accommodations, and gourmet cuisine. What's happening? There's no water over there. But it turned into an epic failure, stranding thousands of guests in waterlogged tents eating soggy cheese sandwiches. The music mogul firing back, tweeting, I too was hustled, scammed, bamboozled, hoodwinked, led astray. This morning, Marianne Roll, the restaurant owner, featured in the Netflix documentary. It really pains me when I have to talk about it, so I just wipe it away. Speaking out, saying that she was the one scammed. It was a thousand for lunch, twelve hundred sometimes for supper. So we were basically running 2,000 meals per day. Claiming she was forced to dip into her personal savings to pay her workers and cover the food for guests, saying she was never paid a penny. I think I spent more than $100,000 on just food and staff. Ja Rule offering his sympathy, posting on Instagram, Marianne Rule, we've never met, but I'm devastated that something that was meant to be amazing turn out to be such a disaster and hurt so many people. Ja Rule has not been charged with any crimes, but McFarland, who was paid to participate in the Hulu documentary, was sentenced in October to six years in prison for defrauding investors. And so many people really feeling for those business owners who are all out all that money. A GoFundMe page for Marianne Roll has raised nearly $140,000 in just over a week, far surpassing its original $123,000 goal. Guys. Yeah, they are the big victims here. Yeah. Let's bring in our chief legal analyst, Dan Amos, for more on this. So, so Ja Rule not prosecuted by prosecutors. Does that mean they bought his argument that he was a victim of the scam as well? Not necessarily. I mean, look, there's a different standard for a criminal prosecution and for, for a civil lawsuit. He's being sued. Uh, because the, the authorities don't believe that they've got enough evidence to say that he was intentionally entering in, into activities to defraud investors, et cetera, but wire fraud. McFarland could clearly meet that. Exactly, exactly. So clearly they believe that McFarland was the central person here. Now, Ja Rule is basically saying, look, I got scammed like everyone else. In these lawsuits, they're suggesting that's not the case. Uh, the plaintiff's basically saying, you knew or should have known. And that's the difference, is negligence in the civil standard is, well, it doesn't mean that you were necessarily trying to do anything wrong, but you should have known is, is the claim uh, against Ja Rule. And we'll have to see, there are at least eight lawsuits ongoing. And there's a difference between going to jail and having to pay. Meantime, we're seeing McFarland get paid by Hulu for this documentary. What kind of concerns does that raise in your mind? Oh, look, it definitely raises ethical uh, concerns. Uh, he's being paid both, you know, we all would like to say oh, it's always for the videos he, that he gave, but it's, also, <laughs> it's, but it's also for the interview that he did, that he's being paid here. On the other hand, Netflix paid the social media company that was involved in this, and there are allegations that they should have known more or did know more than they're saying. So you have sort of these dueling documentaries with both pointing fingers at the other saying they're more unethical than we were, both trying to tell a story about how unethical everything was. And all the legal action now in those civil suits. That's right. It's all civil right now. And I think that there are going to be more civil lawsuits. In fact, uh, a few people in North Carolina have already won uh, one uh, lawsuit. But again, I remind people that when you're talking about the money that McFarland made, if he loses a lawsuit, that money could go back to those people anyway. Okay, Dan Abrams, thanks very much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.
you know, my issue is this. Instead of him, you know, trying to come at the fans and mad because people are questioning him, he needs to be thankful, humble, and super grateful that he didn't find his ass back in prison. Because as we all know, one thing about Ja Rule, he will get some damn prison time for some shit, okay? He's very lucky that he was not thrown in prison with his homeboy, Billy. You know what I mean? He could be sitting right next to him because I refuse to believe that Ja Rule had no idea and was so oblivious to things going on. I understand being an investor, but when you're investing millions of dollars into a supposed festival you're going to want to know where all that money is going you're going to want allocations you're going to want you know receipts you're going to want all that information <laughs> no way no way i want to see the receipts and I refuse to believe that Ja Rule just had no idea. All he did was invest his money and just sit there pretty and wait for the fire Festival to, you know, to basically come together. Even in the documentary, you saw Ja Rule all through the documentary. You know, him still trying to play it off. Like, the shit's still gonna happen. Everything's still gonna come together. So, to me, he's not really innocent in this. He can say whatever he wants to say. But in my personal opinion, he was still complicit. And he can claim ignorance if he wants to. But morally, he knows what he was involved in was all the way wrong he knows that a lot of those people there in the bahamas who work non-stop for a month trying to get that festival together who are not paid to this day those black workers are out of money okay so for him to just try and wash his hands of the situation because now people are looking at him giving him the side eye i find that very funny Again, this is what happens when you sit there and try and showboat, act like you're bigger than what you are, act like you're so all this, you're so all that. In that documentary, he did a lot of showboating, a lot of stunting and fronting, only for everything to turn around and blow up in his face. So this entire situation is crazy. We're going to talk about this more on Sunday. Make sure you guys join me at 6 p.m. for my documentaries and discussion series. We're on episode 9, and we're going to be talking about the Fire Festival. If you guys have not seen the documentaries, like I said, watch both of them. There's one on Hulu. There's one on Netflix. We're going to mainly be talking about the one on Netflix. Um, but check them out. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping concerning Ja Rule, a.k.a. Jeffrey Atkins, trying to distance himself and, you know, play ignorant and act like he had no idea that any of this fuck shit was going on. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Hey you guys, it's your girl T and I hope you really enjoyed that video. If you want to know more about my look of the day or if you want a way to contact me concerning advertisement and sponsorship deals, definitely feel free to click my description box. There's plenty of information in there. Please stay tuned for the next video. Talk to y'all later.